Welcome to In the Green Room. I'm Kinga. <laughs> and I'm Chat. I'm Richard. I'm Candace. I'm a nurse practitioner. I have my practice here in Arizona. It's called Stella Capri Wellness. It's an anti-aging functional medicine longevity clinic where we do aesthetics and then also hormone replacement, uh, functional medicine, weight loss, kind of anything for longevity. Well, what do you, what do you think is the number exciting. one tip that you could give people to avoid aging or to age gracefully, I guess, because it's impossible to actually avoid aging, but you can do it in a way where you still look good. Yeah. So there, there there's, so I, we call this kind of biohacking, right? So you, you can do by working out, increasing your mitochondrial energy. So anybody can do that. It doesn't cost anything. Um, another way is getting good sleep. That promotes longevity. I was about to say, it feels like exercise is the fountain of youth. Everybody I know who is in good shape that's older, it's because they exercise, I swear. And it also, exercise is so important when, pre with pregnancy, to exercise and then that health and their epigenetics of the child going forward. So that, you know, you're, you're working out for your next generation too, mm -hmm. which is very important. That's super interesting. So if the parents are really lazy before they have the kid, that will end up affecting the child? Yeah. Wow. That's really? fascinating. Mm -hmm. Sure. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if, if a parent is uh, completely, like, they don't exercise, they're yeah, eating unhealthy, mm -hmm. it's going to totally have an effect on that child. Yeah. Wow. That makes total yeah. sense, though. Yeah. I mean, it's 100%. Right. Accurate, right? Yeah. So diet is another way for longevity, you know decreasing processed foods, eating healthy oils, not the, you know, oh, the hydrogenated <laughs> oils are very yeah. inflammatory. Another way of longevity is decreasing inflammation the best we can, and we can do that with diet. Bingo. Can we go back to the oils? Number because, one. yeah, intermittent Number fasting one, is great. Yeah. On the oils, what oil are we supposed to eat? I know olive oil is a good one, but uh, how about coconut? oil yeah coconut oil okay. avocado oil just the seed oils are very inflammatory what other oils are inflammatory um anything you see hydrogenized yeah. is all right. awful yeah. try not to eat that um He's so it's hard one. like you go to a restaurant you don't know what kind of oils they're eating and it's you know, it's a little restrictive and you, there is a balance you need to happen right everybody if you're going to drink alcohol or eat out Cheers and to some food. <laughs> menu. And, and you know the alcohol can help with stress and cortisol levels relax you but to a point you know for me i've heard that that's also like kind of a borrowed phenomenon though because all those cortisol levels and stress are going to come back the next day yeah when the hangover if you, is. exactly yeah. um so you know for me I, I stop because i'm just like i'm too busy and i just don't function effectively the next day mm -hmm. so i don't care if <laughs> yeah. uh, mm -hmm. you know i'm not gonna go for the easy fix um, well, if you're just having a glass and you're not overdoing it, yeah, right. Like, and you can enjoy it. And, 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 and if you're having that glass to because you just want to relax, but yet, it, every day is not good. Like um, Andrew Huberman, mm -hmm. the head neuroscientist at Stanford, he was saying more than one drink a week will have a permanent effect, basically, on your body or your mind. Well, my so, grandma lived to be 105, and she had a glass of wine with dinner. So she probably would have lived to day. be much, much older if she didn't drink. That That's much. true. Well, she could have been 130. Yeah, and That's there's true. this whole <laughs> research of like who the centenarians, people that live to 100, and what part of the world they live in, and you know, you'll find blue somebody zone. has had a um, right. yeah, the blue zones. Yeah. Or it, have you studied that? Yeah, have you studied a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. With Vince uh, Victor Longo, he's started prolong the intermittent fasting diet. Um, he has a great book about, you know, he'll, he'll go from both ends. You know, you can do the intermittent fasting, not drink. Or then he shows studies on somebody who has a glass of whiskey every night and, you know, eats whatever. And they live in Italy, but where the, the what's in our food is different here. Yeah. So. Yeah, European diet, the Mediterranean diet, people who live in Europe, like, you know, the French paradox. How come the pe people of France look so good and they drink wine and with every meal? And they love and butter, Italy too. too <laughs> and they eat butter and, and, you know, and their health seems to be better. That that has changed somewhat over the, over the past few decades, but that... That's a great question. Is it because they're enjoying and that they're just being more social? No, it's what they put in our food. Yeah. Most of, I mean, there's so many farming communities out mm -hmm. there, and yeah. what they've done to gluten in America. Yeah. And mm -hmm. well, the, the food's food, healthier. Yeah. Number one. The food, and they eat and, less processed. And they food. drink a glass of wine with a meal. Right. They don't drink 
wine all the time. Mm -hmm. Just you know, just and the wines are actually the less wines inflammatory. Have more, yeah, less additives right. in the European wines. Less toxins. I, yes. That's why I mostly drink European wines. Okay, so I know you touched on the oils, and I have a friend that has some kind of an app that tells you what oils certain restaurants use because apparently oh, there's some really cool. bad oh, really? oils that some restaurants use yes mm -hmm. and then also people don't know that some of these restaurants will use that oil like a thousand times right. before they throw it away and yeah. that's so well, any, any bad fast thing. foods you know mcdonald's you name it that they, they, they do the french fries and you know those, those oils get over really bad oils they do. and how bad is that for your body it's so bad it's infl it's there's going to be inflammation in your arteries inflammation in the gut yeah. and that's going to mm. cause inflammation in your brain and um, weight gain, fatigue, thyroid dysfunction, hormone dysfunction, Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's, yep. yeah, heart disease. Okay, so basically, we want to be uh, be careful where we eat out. Yeah, be yeah. very careful. But you don't really know. You see, you could, this could be a, a, a you know, it could be a, a, a three star Michelin restaurant and have great food that tastes m amazing, mm -hmm. that blows your mind, but you don't know what ingredients are going on there. You assume that because they were so expensive, they're using good ingredients. But who really knows? It's not like there's a label that tells you what mm -hmm. each each dish has in it, right? Mm -hmm. No, if you go to some place like True Food or something, mm -hmm. then then you know basically that mm -hmm. the, 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 this is their, you know, this is their concept. But like the Sam Fox restaurants, I know they're good about it there. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I'm not kind of up on who's good or who's not, yeah. but, you know, I definitely worry about that every time I but if eat you, out. If you eat out all the time, you, you don't know, you you can't really control. Well, especially if you're ordering food. Uber Eats. I know somebody that well, orders well, that, Uber well, Eats like main, every day. The main thing is that you That's have be. to stay obsessed with the fitness side of it if you're going to have one of those meals because sometimes it's going to happen you go out for a friend's birthday or something you're going to have that you mm. know junk food meal you might have a slice of cake the most important thing is that you're consistent in the gym and with your fitness and work that off the next day okay i love that he's or, saying that because because okay, wait, I, I you know who my favorite example of this though is mm -hmm. is chad ochocinco mm -hmm. he was famous for eating at mcdonald's every oh, day he, he, no he uh had the longest number of started uh, games as an NFL wide receiver. He held the record for at one point mm -hmm. in time. and But that's obviously because he was doing the right things in the gym to burn that McDonald's off. Like, obviously... You know, burn off bad foods. And exactly. And it, and it, and it, he probably had the genetic makeup that he was able... To, it didn't affect him as it would affect somebody else. Oh, 100%. Genetics play a huge role. But I think the training is obviously a big aspect, too. Like, if he wasn't training like that, he probably would have gotten fat like the Super Size Me guy. Like, if you look at what the Super Size Me guy did compared to what Ocho Chad Ochocingo did, they basically did the same thing. The only variable that was different is the exercise. Chad Ochocingo started the most consecutive games in the NFL as a wide receiver. He, like, set the record. So mm -hmm. it shows that... If well, that doesn't mean he's going to live to be 100, Chad. I know that, but I'm talking about the results like in the short term results you're able to keep your physical health and have those type of meals if you're working it off in the gym do i recommend you eat at mcdonald's every day definitely not you should never eat at mcdonald's but he's just living proof that you can work it off in the gym yeah so that's why i love peptides because we're yeah. going to be exposed to things we're not aware of oils plastic what's in our water mm. system um viruses yes. and bacteria the vaccines so parasites the parasites 100 percent. so th that's why i love these peptides because they're there's ones for inflammation um ones that's going to heal your gut from the stuff that we ate or something maybe you know you had your parent was not healthy when you were when they were pregnant and you're set up for not like a great hormonal uh, ride so yeah, that's why I love these peptides because they kind of address what is going on and and heal that. Peptides can turn off genes, turn on genes, repair genes, repair the DNA. They, there's some that can elongate the telomeres, which are the ends of the chromosome, which shorten as we age. So if there's like a longevity peptide, I would say that one because mm -hmm. it actually... Can you repeat that? Which, what is it called? Epitalin. Uh, epitalin? So mm -hmm. Epitalin. For okay. people listening that may not know what peptides yeah. are, could you explain Thank what you. are peptides? Thank you. I was just going to ask that. Yeah. Yeah. So Thank they're you. short amino acids. They have to be le less than 40 base pairs. So it's just a short protein, pretty mm -hmm. much. Right. We have 300,000 peptides in our body. So right. mm -hmm. insulin... Naturally. Yeah, yeah. naturally. Insulin was the first peptide that was developed or found. Oh. So if we didn't have insulin, really? anybody with type 1 diabetes, 
diabetes would right. be dead. Yeah. yeah. That's a, okay. But where do we, okay. Where do we find these peptides? Well, there are some that are pharmacologic, but mm -hmm. they're very expensive. And but mm -hmm. another peptide that we see hear about every day is Ozempic, or you know, the that's a peptide. That's a peptide. Interesting. Yeah. So if you're trying to lose weight with Ozempic, is that healthy? Yeah. It is. Yes, it's very healthy. I need it tomorrow. Yeah. It's <laughs> and it also helps you stop drinking too, which is good. Oh, perfect. It okay. plays on dopamine, and so you just don't crave it. Um, but yeah, so the, those are farm logics. Okay, well, we'll talk about that next year because so I'm starting. What Ozempic, exactly? Because so. everybody's talking about Ozempic right now. What exactly is the function of how that peptide enacts on your body to make you lose weight? Because I know that it curbs your appetite. Is that yeah. how it works essentially? Yeah. So that's like the immediate result because it's a GLP agonist. That means it blocks ghrelin. Ghrelin is our hunger hormone. That's what makes us hungry. Mm -hmm. So it acts as, as like an appetite suppression in that sense, where you're just not going to be as hungry, crave food that you normally crave, and then it delays gastric emptying, so when you eat, you feel fuller quicker, kind of like gastric bypass. Mm -hmm. But the reason I love this peptide for longevity is that it... Um, oh, so you think it's good for more than just weight loss, then? 100%, because our the insulin becomes, with American diet, all this inflammatory, yep, yep. Um, mm -hmm. our insulin becomes resistant. So insulin is the portal that you need to get the glucose into the cell uses energy. With the environment, being overweight, menopause, after kids, it start or genetics, it takes more of these insulin to get to the, the cell into its energy. So the insulin's like, yeah, I don't wanna be lazy. I'm just gonna store this as fat because I don't wanna break it down and I'm lazy and it's so, a lot of people, you know, no matter what they do, a diet or exercise, they can't lose the weight. They're stuck at this weight, and it's because their insulin doesn't work as effectively. Yeah. So I have a friend, this, I'm not going to say who, but she's gained a lot of weight, and she was considering taking this, but she's trying to do it first without... Um, but it's like almost getting, impossible. But, but yeah. it's been too much. She gave up drinking. Listen, she gave up drinking, and she gave up desserts. And... I talked to her the other day, and it's sad she didn't lose a pound. No, no. she hasn't lost Give a pound. Her insulin, and dessert her, she's do got it. insulin dysregulation. And what she's going to do is she's going to wind up getting a bypass, and that has its own issues. Well, no, she's well, going to the, candy. Well, cutting out the drinking town. and desserts would work if she was exercising enough to put herself into a caloric deficit, but she obviously is not. If she didn't mention that as part of her regimen, so she said, "Oh, I'm cutting out 500 calories a day, removing this." I'm also burning an additional 300 calories or calories a day doing this, then she probably would be in enough of a deficit to lose some weight. Maybe. But without, well, I told her when we're on the phone, basically without a Zempic, if you're not doing a you know mm -hmm. consistent training regimen, good luck losing any weight. Yeah, and then more successful if you're eating healthy, not eating the sugars. I mean, the Zempic does take that out of it. It takes the chatter out of you know, if I eat this, am I gonna gain weight? It's like, no, my body's gonna work more effectively. And then when you're working out, staying hydrated, um, cause you don't wanna lose muscle. So you need to work out so you retain your muscle mass. But no, I think it's great for, it, it's for polycystic ovarian, like hormone dysfunction, even people with like younger girls with eating disorders where they're mm -hmm. looking at Instagram, they know, and they have some insulin dysregulation. You see it younger and younger, and it's sure. the, our environment. Sure. Yeah. And yeah, mm -hmm. if they eat something, they probably will gain weight. And they're looking at their friend who maybe is genetically set up a little bit better, where she's eating the yeah. cheesesteak yeah. and real thin. Yeah. We're like, yep. you know, where Oprah talked about it, she could eat any, had the best diet and the best food in the world, she still couldn't lose the weight. Because genetically, her insulin didn't work as well as mm -hmm. somebody, you know, better. Yeah. So ne she's so thankful for this medication. She's like, I've been doing the right thing for years, never being able to lose the weight. Where this is like, okay. How much weight has she lost? Do you know? Like, she looks great. And I and she did a great talk about it. Because there, there is a stigma. And, and I'm trying to like, yeah. no, it's yeah, not. There is. there is. And it's like. Is you know, it true that you have to take it for the rest of your life? No, so you oh, take it. Oh, okay, that's what I'm saying. And I dose it differently. Like the pharmaceutical company wants you to get on a higher dose, higher dose, higher dose, because that makes them more mm, money. Right. So I call it kind of micro dosing. Oh, those that's then. cool. Oh, that's cool. So, I like that concept. I love that. Yeah. Right? Yes. So it's small, a lot less than even is a what you can get at your normal pharmacy. You can dose less, and people lose the weight. You do it until you're 
at the weight you want to be at because it resets your basal metabolic weight that no matter what you do with diet exercise right. your body wants to stay here you like you can go on this crash diet but the second you eat anything then you get back to that right. metabolic. well right. this resets it to a lower one that you're healthier at and then you're able to taper off the medication but patients like oprah or something that's just genetically they their insulin doesn't function that then that person like my would, friend then that person might have to be on there longer. But I had somebody that had lost a hundred pounds on this and she tried everything. Mm -hmm. She is, you know, 4'11", over 200 pounds. She tried hit every diet, yeah. nothing worked. Mm. And she lost the weight. She went down to 140 on those because she was doing the right things too. And then she yeah. came off of it for two years and was able to retain that lower weight. Wow. And then at the two year mark, she had gained like 10 pounds. And I'm like, yeah, this is, might be something you might have to do here and there because sure. you know, you've know you been fighting with your weight your whole yeah. life, but yeah. So insulin and Ozempic are probably the two most famous peptides. What's one that we probably haven't heard of that's like, going to be well, the new the next all, one that smart, everybody's talking first all, about first smart. of all my question is are all peptides pharmacological no no it's really hard to make it a pharmacologic because they're dosed yeah, yeah because they're dosed differently and for the cause of what is it going to be treated so like with ozempic it was first a diabetic medication then they saw that the diabetic patients lost weight so then they did a clinical trial as far as weight loss that's billions of dollars to yeah. get that approved for clinical trial and they have certain doses it's a ready-made pen where the peptides like you can use them for rheumatoid arthritis autoimmune um immune dysfunction like from a vaccine or um you know so many cancer but to get it approved in a clinical yeah. trial is so difficult and so yeah. much money yeah. so thymus and alpha is like one of my favorite peptides i give it anybody who gets sick it fights bacteria virus um it's great for anti-cancer it's super safe i've given it to my kids since they were babies they've never been on antibiotics really? Yeah, they've never. Mm -hmm. and kids I, can kids can yeah, take peptides I actually, too. I actually treat a lot of children. Um, a pediatrician had found me where with autism, cerebral palsy, where conventional medicine wasn't working, mm. and you know, a lot, I had nonverbal autistic patients speaking now, uh, less seizures. It's it's incredible, and hmm. so there. So that peptide thymus and alpha is a bio. It's a pharmacologic. However, it's called Zyprexa. And it's not as good as what we get from the compounding pharmacy. It's only indicated for hepatitis C. That's the only indication. So you can't use it for anything else. Okay. And it's like $10,000 and nobody has it. Okay. Where I charge, like in my clinic, you get for 350 bucks. Wow. Wow. Well, I guess my question is, how are peptides made? Are they made? They're synthesized in a compounding pharmacy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they're very, um, I use like the so two best compounding. Products. They're synthesized from a natural yeah. product. Yeah, so like BPC is from the gastric juices of dogs. The Ozempic is from the venom of the Gila monster. So Say it again? What? Yeah. Ozempic is from the venom of a Gila monster. Yeah. That's fascinating. Wow. Yeah. So that means it is truly like a natural source. Well, it's synthesized. It's not the actual venom, but they made the amino acid sequence the yeah, same. Yeah, the sequence. Wow. So, yeah. That's incredible. And well, yeah. and wow. Natural wildlife helping to make medicine is one of the reasons why we need to be protecting our environment and limiting you know, mining and deforestation and that kind of stuff. Because who knows how many other medicines are going to be discovered from things like Gila monster venom. Mm -hmm. like, That's incredible. Yeah. Uh, Gabe, uh, yeah. sorry, can you ask them to turn yeah, it down? I'm, I'm and the me. time is off the monitor. Okay. Sorry about that. Oh, okay. So Gila monster venom, that's incredible. So mm -hmm. uh, it's interesting because I was stung by a scorpion uh, last year. I... Not, not today, but yesterday or day before, I'm not sure which day it was, um, there was a scorpion and a bunch of wasps. But last year when I was stung by the scorpion, I feel like it took away the arthritis in my big toe. I've had a lot of trauma in my toe. Uh, yeah. And at first, you know, it was mm -hmm. terrifying yeah. and very painful. Uh, but then I feel like that scorpion sting that went right there in my toe yeah. helped my arthritic toe. So yeah, I've scorpions, heard of um, arthritis. Right? So, so, so with the bee sting, there's something with the bee sting too mm -hmm. in arthritis. There's like, really? Yeah, 
Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. I, I, so I've had Chet was stung by a scorpion what a week ago. Yeah. Did you have any? Did you feel like it helped anything? No. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm not sure theory. that it cured my toe, so I think you should look into yeah. scorpion stings. Yeah, but there are also great peptides for arthritis, whether it's um, you know rheumatoid or osteoarthritis. So there's great. It, there's so many peptides for inflammation, and you know the weight gain can be inflammatory and the GLPs they if you still if you have like an inflammatory type of weight gain where you're just your body's inflamed they help a little bit but you have to add other peptides with that and decrease the inflammation first so it sounds so like usually I put a pe most of my patients are on a peptide stack depending on what their goals are if it's just for longevity there's certain peptides if it's for weight loss it's for inflammation if it's cancer but to and you can use them all together. Okay. They work synergistically. Really? Yeah. Um. So you know, some patients are on ten peptides. Some patients are on two. It's just. Kind I was of gonna say. So it sounds like your practice has, like, a lot of use for anybody who wants to, like, basically, get maximization out of their health and fight the aging process. Mm -hmm. But then also for anybody who basically has like a long term issue that they haven't been able to get to the bottom of. It sounds like. A great potential solution for those people. Yeah, there yeah. are many chronic issues that people mm -hmm. suffer from, mm -hmm. uh, and you know, conventional medicine is not going to address those. Do you want to speak about your? What about? I don't know. Oh my, uh, my SIBO. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Perfect. I didn't know if it was a secret, and we forgot to ask oh. about this before the show. This is so, a big secret. <laughs> well, you can't. I have you know. SIBO. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Alert, oh, alert, it's not alert. A anymore. <laughs> he didn't say Ebola, SIBO. Oh, yeah. SIBO is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, and it's very common. And the good news is, it's, it's Candace good. is healing him because yeah. she discovered, yes. uh, what, what is this Yeah, peptide? there's a peptide, it's a combination of BPC-157, which right. is the, from the gastric juices in dogs. With the, I think they discovered what? it. <laughs> that Pavlovic, you know, when the dog was salivating yeah, yeah. and they put this juice on something and like healed it. Really? Yeah. It's so interesting. Another... Yeah. So, but, wow. but gut health is 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 crucial. so important. It's so crucial. crucial for the rest of your, mm -hmm. your for whole body health. And why health. is it just now, like right. in the last few years, that people are talking about gut health? I feel like it's popular now, but like I, I, I feel think, like twenty years ago it wasn't. I think because twenty years ago we didn't have all the toxins in our environment and oh, food, yeah. ah, and big, now we're yeah. yeah, yeah. So you know, uh, I I was going to a, 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 a functional medicine doctor mm -hmm. and um, the, the, the normal you know um, why didn't he tell you about the peptides because they don't they're not using them okay they're out I've never they're heard of them you know most even functional Stella medicine Capri doctors wellness. are not using them yet right? Stella Capri wellness yeah, yeah. will make yeah, you I well I think it's going to be more and more of it the FDA really did put a ban on a lot of peptides which why? is sad <laughs> why 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 is that because, because they the don't money. make the pharmaceutical yeah, companies any do. money. Right. Okay. Don't, so it's interesting. So the, they put this list on these, thymus and alpha was on there, which I'm like, why is this? No, there's been no mm -hmm. negative side effects with this peptide. It's only thing that helps so many people. Um, but it was interesting. So GL, the GLP is like the Ozempic. Mm -hmm. They are compounded now because there's a shortage from the pharmaceutical company. So... The, they were on the ban list because they want patients still on that medication mm -hmm. so that when they do make enough from the pharmaceutical company, they'll get back on that one. Damn. So really well, let me understand this now. The pharmaceutical companies are making peptides. Some. And there, there's like, yeah, and there's, right? I think they, but they're right now there's like 200 clinical trials with different right. peptides. And, but they're, they charge a lot more money yes. than when you get these that are done uh, in, 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 in a, in a compound. So everybody out there, we have to go to right? Stella Capri okay. Wellness. I don't want to right. talk about the government. That's a waste. Okay. Uh, so well, I'll just go off because there's well, there's no way we can change what they're doing. It was doing. really relevant. Yeah. He was talking about I mean, how talk, she makes it cheaper. The government yeah, but, 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 but I, I, I want to go straight company. to and then like yeah. why the functional medicine doctors didn't prescribe them and a lot of net diet. You know, I think functional medicine naturopaths are gonna. It's just hard because functional medicine they have to kind of still follow the rules. From insurance, yeah. And Medicaid, well, unless they're not, unless they're concierge, they're practice, yeah, yeah. Mr. Concierge, which and it's just hard to transition to that, yeah. you know, especially people are like, I, well, I pay insurance, like yeah. I need to. Why am I going to pay another doctor? 
mm -hmm. because I already pay so much in insurance and I think you know we need to just be an advocate for our own health and do research and yeah. kind of well you your know. care is a lot of a, a lot is preventative right because you're yeah preventing Mm -hmm. these issues and, and creating longevity because of it yeah and then I'm also correcting you know there's a lot of more thyroid dysfunction younger and younger or polycystic ovarian or um, more autoimmune oh yeah Big so time. Uh, but I do put so when somebody comes to me how it works is they'll fill out a form we'll kind of talk through their goals they'll do labs mm -hmm. especially because I want to look at oh hormones. you do have them do the labs okay. yeah oh, and sure. for mm -hmm. some peptide yeah for for some peptides, like peptides are pretty much safe for uh, most people. Mm -hmm. There's not really, you can monitor in the labs wise, but mm -hmm. if your hormones are not balanced, then I feel like some, depending on what your concern is, um, if they're not balanced or something else is off and you take peptides, sometimes like driving a souped up car with flat tires because you need to make, you know, it's right. a holistic approach. Mm -hmm. But with inflammatory, you got a cold and you've got long-term COVID, I mean, I've helped so many long-term COVID oh, patients wonderful. with adults and children. Wonderful. So, and that with the kids, they react so, so quickly. To really, um, you know, we're at a, we're at a period right now mm -hmm. with peptides and and in the medical industry in general that you know this is still controversial a bit. Mm -hmm. And uh, but it, I think this will evolve to the point of this is the future of medicine. Yeah. Oh yes. Okay things like stem cells, peptide, these are the future of medicine, which will change the game drastically. Don't you agree? I agree. But I mean, it's just going to take like, time, it, know. you know, for these things to become more uh, accepted. Well, and, and I think how long having you think like it's the Zempic up? out there and people realizing yeah. the peptide, but, you know, they wouldn't put, it's, I have so many patients that could benefit from them for weight loss, mm -hmm. but their insurance won't cover it. Oh, no. And, no. It's so much, it costs them $1,500 a month and they can't afford that. So then they hear about me where I could get a three month supply for $600. Wow. And it's cheaper than what they can get from the pharmacy. And then they have my care so I can heal their gut and do all this other yeah, stuff. And yeah. I'm like, how come, what are you gonna cause, how much money are you gonna cost the healthcare industry with you being overweight, heart disease, diabetes, you know, and you can't get this covered. It's insane. Right. Yeah, no, it is. It's it's way out of that. Way, yeah. way well, out of that it's incredible because uh, I'm excited to tell my friend that she actually that's why she was trying to do it naturally, lose all this weight, uh, because I think she was told it was going to be twelve hundred dollars a month, mm -hmm. and so she she's trying to do it naturally, and uh, it's she so far it's not working. Right. So she can it, right? yeah, she can afford it. Just yeah, do but it. still, I think it's just like uh, twelve hundred to pay for a prescription. Kind of. Well, Carmen, when she's here. Come oh, and see Candace. That's what we're going to do. Yeah. Put her, and, you know, she's she's going to come and put it on the proper she's excited. regimen. Now, I have a question. Mm -hmm. What other um, biohacking things are you using in your practice besides peptides? Anything else? Well, let me think of biohacking. So, what are we talking you know, about? It's, yeah. it's, it's change in your that you're making positive changes so it could be like meditation is biohacking sure. cold yeah. plunge infrared sauna yeah um, cold plunge you think is great yeah okay it increases yeah. the mitochondrial energy so the mitochondrial energy decreases as we age and that's gonna you so know, getting the in your mitochondria school. is the energy powerhouse of the cell we, we yeah. want our mitochondria to be at its optimum functioning level so there's peptides for that but there's also you know lifestyle changes you can make so, I mean, as far as my practice, like how mm -hmm. the biohacking is, the peptides, the hormone replacement, hormone, different supplements yeah, that, okay. um, and then aesthetic wise, I wouldn't really call that biohacking, but then I, I give patients tools of what they can do to biohack. Like, but actually, are there benefits to do doing a heat as well as ice? Because for some reason, mm -hmm. cold tubs, or ice baths are so tough for me, but like going into a sauna or a steam room can be kind of relaxing, but are there similar health benefits from that or not? So mm -hmm. steam room, you if you do, it's great to do both. So okay. you want to do the steam room, or not really steam room, more sauna. The steam room doesn't infrared, really offer anything. Infrared yeah, sauna. infrared sauna. Mm -hmm. Then you mm -hmm. end in the cold plunge. And that's going to, you don't want to end hot. Mm -hmm. Because, it, I, and I'm always at the gym, like at lifetime, like, don't don't go back in the sauna you need to because then because then you're because you want your body your mitochondria to kind of heat up itself to you know your body's temperature but if you get in the 
sauna, then it de then you don't get the benefit. Interesting. So you, ch you just jump in the pool before it. No, is she's talking about true like cool like ice bath, like trying to get the cold water plunge. below fifty cold degrees. Plunge, the yeah. pool is not even so, close. So, to that so does it not? So does it do? Uh, does it not help at all if your pool is just you know? way too cold and you jump in there it, it, is it it doesn't yeah, have to no, be ice you can do, no you can do your cold like, yeah. Especially, yeah you can do a cold yeah you cold can if you lived you can do a cold shower or cold ocean yeah cold shower you everybody should have that mm -hmm. it's just a little bit harder these you, you, your pool's not heated yet you can just jump in your pool yeah it's now that it's summer it's not going to be cold though no yeah, yeah so it's not the benefit well, that next she's year talking about. you can jump yeah. in in december uh, or, that or, that's right. yeah. or in february that would be the, that's exactly what she's talking about yeah, yeah. it but. decreases inflammation mm -hmm. um increases endorphins so yeah it's great for you well that's why athletes right they mm -hmm. uh, jump in a cold ice bath yeah to help heal the muscles and all that, right? Yeah. 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 It's the same thing. Here's the interesting thing. We're talking about these things anti that are really anti-aging. In mm -hmm. other words, you can be, you know, in your 60s, 70s, Longevity. 80s, and, and, and be in kind of bad shape, but you can reverse these things with certain protocols, certain these biohacks. And, and you know, and, and the thing about uh, uh, the mitochondria, you can, you can, produce more mitochondria. Mm -hmm. uh, senescence is another mm -hmm. thing where the cells die. That's a whole thing. And the whole thing about aging is, you know, you go to most doctors and they say, well, this is just a natural part of aging. Well, it turns out that's not true. This is what they've discovered. You just there hit are, the nail on the head. So much of it is a mental thing. Yeah, you, you know, so there you are agree with that? A protocols lot now that actually yeah. reverse aging. Yeah. Well, and I well, want to say the I, reason why I'm saying it's mental. I, I want to mm -hmm. go in on that point is basically just mm -hmm. the fact that it's about continuing to do stuff. I just saw this video of this lady who just won the oldest. She won the Guinness World Record for the oldest uh, active or gymnast. She's 98 and still yeah. able to uh, do the pommel horse. Yeah. Like that's amazing. She She's can. 98. Yeah. Stop it. Yeah, Are and can serious? do like a full body hold, like tilted. Yeah. So that goes to show it's all about consistency and staying active. If she had at any point taken a year off, she would definitely have lost that core strength and stability and the ability to do that. But the fact that she's stayed an active gymnast till that age, she's still able to do it at 98. Some of these poses she was hitting, I can't even do. Like, it's amazing. Awesome. That really? is incredible. Are you a gymnast? No, no. <laughs> no. But I so, think Candace, I'm in great shape, but that old lady can been, do better than I've I can. I've been trying to ask her this because I feel if, with the anti-aging stuff that you do, you know, to help people that feel insecure about, you know, maybe they don't like their wrinkles right here, or they don't want their wrinkles right here, and they come to you and you, you know, inject them with Dysport or Botox or whatever it is, and some people are against it, but if it makes them feel better, it makes them feel happier, isn't that anti-aging right there? Isn't that longevity? Yeah, I mean, definitely happiness and self, you know. Because when you're the, happy. Right. You know, it, and you're positive, it, you that's good for your health. I mean, to a certain point, though, because, like, you wouldn't tell it to somebody who's like, oh, I'm happily doing something that's actually, you know, negative for my system. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You wouldn't tell it to somebody who's, like, addicted to Mountain Dew or something. You're like, oh, this just makes me happy. Yeah. Like, no, that's still poison. Yeah. Well, so, I, I don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> I'm saying it doesn't matter if something brings you joy. Like, it's not going to offset how bad it is for you if the thing is really bad for you in the first place like if you're talking about like no i'm talking about when, when like people go to do a facial or they they go to do a massage or they go to have their wrinkles yeah. taken away and she helps them with that kind of thing okay. and then okay. it's a long-term thing that makes them yeah like, like there's good. some people who are getting like uh implants wherever to make themselves look like they're more jacked but some of those people they continue doing it until they can't even move anymore so that's like an example of when somebody Okay. It's doing That's something that they think is making them happy, but it's eventually sh basically shooting themselves in the foot. Yeah, well, so it that's too a good far. And then okay. for me, like on the aesthetic side, you know, there's only so much I can do with the biogenerators or mm -hmm. toxins or fa lasers. If your body's not healthy, you're not going to regenerate that collagen. So, or you don't have, if you don't have the hormones to do it, you need mm -hmm. your estrogen and your testosterone mm -hmm. for the collagen. So it's like, okay, I can do all this stuff, mm -hmm. but if you have no hormones, it's not going to really do much. Oh, okay. So or it, it's kind of a whole of package. Yeah, it, 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 it is. You have to kind of... Uh, assess everything about the whole wellness yeah and then the you know, i've had some patients like i just don't want to do hormones and i was like well 
I don't know if you're a right candidate for this. So yeah, when somebody takes a uh, hormone good. Good to try to uh, like, like reboot their body or reboot their system, does that ever um, impede their ability to create that hormone? Like people that go on hormone therapy, like if somebody goes on testosterone replacement therapy, will that affect their ability to naturally produce testosterone? I do testosterone differently. And then I, you know, for men, when they get low testosterone, it just like happens about age 40, 50. It can happen. It happens younger too. We all have men in their twenties with a hundred. They don't, that's not, they don't make any testosterone. Me giving them testosterone is going to make them normal. So what, when they stop, will they go back to a hundred? Like, I'm not going to give somebody testosterone that doesn't need it. Yeah. It's more on the clinical symptoms. And, you know, So somebody needs uh, something for, you know, what do you call that? Uh, let's say somebody needs, what do you call that? We're talking about aging. I'm talking about, like, if a guy needs... Testosterone? Some, yes. Yeah. So I'll look at their levels and their clinical symptoms. So if they're kind of hard, they're carrying this abdominal fat, they have so much fatigue, they have trouble with libido, um, they can't gain any muscle, and then you run their labs, and then, yeah, sure enough, they have low testosterone. But to usually testosterone's dose, you know, a large amount, 200 milligrams divided even twice a week or once a week. So, mm -hmm. but men make testosterone 18 milligrams daily is the average. Mm -hmm. So, like my microdosing, I have my men daily dose testosterone with a little tiny needle, equivalent to how their body makes it, 18 milligrams, so then not 200. So then at the, oh, great. So, so that makes a big difference mm -hmm. right there. So, is that a so basically at the end no. of the answer mm -hmm. then, the, yeah, yeah. it won't impede your natural no. levels. It'll just only enhance your levels. Yeah. Okay, that's so, good so to know. That, so that would be instead of Viagra. Is that what you're saying? No, this no. is talking about aging. When your testosterone levels mm -hmm. dip, you basically have to go on TRT if you want to avoid aging. It's yeah, like, and it, you can and then there's but like okay why are your test why are you 20 and your testosterone is this low are you is it because you've been overweight have you been do you have parasites do you oh, have i'm your super gut? high i'm talking no, that for when i'm, I'm in my 40s like, my patient, like <laughs> yes. is your, gut, when I'm, I, when is your gut health bad so i'm going to try can too much cannabis be a problem but i am obsessed yeah. okay i am obs cannabis can be a problem yeah it does lower your testosterone. I'm obsessed yeah. with anti-aging though. So the second I turn 40 mm -hmm. or 45, whatever age that is, I'm going to go on to it immediately because yeah. it's confusing to me the people that don't because the, mm -hmm. it's been shown that it keeps you young. Yeah. Yeah. So so why would you wait till you're 40? Why would you Because my, my levels are high right like now. He doesn't need it. <laughs> right. I know, but it wouldn't hurt for if her If I had too. more testosterone, I would never sleep. Okay, so you so, probably get like angry. I think he has a lot of testosterone. Yeah, that's true. And then it yeah, would uh, convert to like if you get acne and stuff. So. Yeah, but but it would hurt I need to have well, the blood work and have you know just see how he's doing. Correct. Yeah. No, well, that's what I did. but with everything else, I just yeah. mean with everything else. Maybe you don't need it for testosterone. Yeah, the last time I did it, everything was great, and that was like two years ago. Because so. I, but too like mm -hmm. the level when you test somebody's labs, right? So an average lab thing is the average of the American population. Well, who's getting the labs? Older people that have so much inflammation. Yes. So when you like, just because it's in the normal range doesn't mean it's normal. Right. I love that. I love that. There's, That's so true. There's mm -hmm. different ways to test for t testosterone, if I'm not yeah. mistaken, too. Yeah. And, and so it's a little bit deceptive. People don't quite understand what those, what it really means. So do you have well, peptides for libido? Yeah, there's yeah. one. It's called the sex peptide. It's called PT141. It's great for women. It helps with orgasm, helps with vaginal lubrication. And then men, it's a healthier way to get an erection because, you know, with a Cialis or Viagra, it can cause like headaches and it just affects your oh, blood pressure. Terrible. Where this they're, they're doesn't. Terrible. Yeah, it doesn't do that. So, so it's a, just like a natural for type of. ED? Yeah. So, so it works the same. Really? Yeah. But better. Better. Interesting. How much so, does that cost for a month? For a man? Well, for a vial that'll last. And they're listening to hashtag yeah. this. For a vial is like two hundred fifty. It'll last you a few months. So, so for other months. other hormones other than testosterone, is it kind of the same as far as like your body will still be able to create yeah, that hormone? Yeah, hundred percent. It just. We're just the, making more like physiological a, levels to mm -hmm. balance it. Like I see women younger and younger actually have lower progesterone or deficient around age 30. Progesterone is what you need 
um, to protect you against estrogen dominant cancers. Mm. It helps with polycystic ovarian. There's, there's a lot of love. So you need mm. to give women bioidentical progesterone, especially it helps fertility. Um, and then thyroid is another hormone that, you know, I think it's the environment where you're seeing low thyroid and my, my younger symptoms. sister has that and she yeah. takes some kind of a pill. She needs to and see yes, you The too. reason why I wanted to ask that is because I go to the gym all the time. So I found myself sometimes around like the bodybuilder types and there's like all these rumors with those guys that are like, oh, if you go on TRT or whatever, it'll make your balls disappear. Well, that, it does because oh, it, okay, shrinks, so it, does. it inhibits the LH and FSH. So when you're on testosterone, you know, I always tell people, are you, are you planning on having children? Because it, it can affect that and you, oh, okay. and you won't have a... You're so smart. <laughs> she knows about everything. The sperm I mean, seriously. will not be, well the sperm born. will not I know. produce a embryo. Interesting. So, um, that's why you, I usually... So it's important to get the dosing perfectly. The managed. dosing and then you have to add another peptide, HCG, so that if men do, say they have their testosterone is 100, they're young, but they can't stay awake. They can't even get an erection because their testosterone is so low. So, okay, we need to put you on testosterone, but let's give you a peptide that's going to protect your sperm when you do want to have kids in the future. Yeah, yeah. Um, or, and you what know, peptide would that be? Uh, that's HCG or gonadorlin. So you take that along with the testosterone, or you can take that independently. First, I for men that want to have kids, I put them in that mm. first, and not because that's going to increase their testosterone mm. naturally. And then, you know, we'll see how that goes. Chad, do you want to have kids? In a long time. Not anytime soon. Well, hold on. What's too late? I mean, what's too late for a guy? For a guy, there's no such thing. Well, well there's no such thing, but I would put them on all the peptides to make their sperm younger. Yeah, because, yeah. yeah exactly. Right. Because, because you said earlier that when what someone's doing prior is going to affect the child, is it, it won't it affect the child if somebody's too old? Yeah, that's what, yeah. So yes. that's a Robert De Niro. He just had a kid at like 80 something. Yeah, but how healthy is yeah. that kid? And I, I think, think it's funny. I don't think it's it ethical. Can, right. So, and the, the you know, you, when you are trying to have a, child, a child, you need to be the healthiest you can be. So you're helping people also with their sex life. Yeah, which and, is, and which fertility. Is longevity. Yes. Because Definitely. don't you feel like sex is really important for oh, people? Oh, hundred percent. I feel like it. It makes me mad when women come in and I'm just like, "Well, how's your libido? How's your sex life?" And they're like, "Oh, I'm over that." And I'm like, "No, sex is a part of life. It's a part of yes. living. Like, Absolutely. you need to have <laughs> Gee, sex right. until you're in your hundreds. It's like, yeah. I love that. The you know that gymnast lady is still climbing poles. Yeah. Uh, Gabe will be ha hashtagging sex life and. Sex yeah. at 100. You can do PT 141. That's the sex at <laughs> 100. Sex at 100. I like that. Anyway, sex that's at 100. Great. Well, oh, that, that could be your new, new t-shirt. Yeah. Sex at 100. Yeah. <laughs> we have three minutes left. Uh, so I want to make sure we talk about okay. everything. We have so much to talk to you about. So this is multiple shows, like, you know, every other month or every yeah, time. Yeah, I mean, we could talk about different pets. There's, you know, probably 20 I use in my practice daily. So... Mm -hmm. So what would you say, are you on, is it okay for me to ask you, yeah, are you on any peptides? I am. So I do, you know, the gut peptide, BPC, KPV, like once a year to heal the gut. Is that what you're on? Yeah. yeah. And I'm going on it. Yeah. It and then Epitalin, I do once a year for 10 days. And I think this is interesting. I just did all my labs. And then you can test your your ovarian reserve, like how, it's a number. Mm -hmm. So... I was like, I wonder what, you know, I'm 43 now. So my ovarian reserve is... Stop it. You look like you're 21. I was like, well, you really do. You well, can put a Xavier skirt it, on and go into the school. So it's that of a 25-year-old. So I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> so I, like, I guess I don't know when I'll go into menopause, but... I'm like, that's really high, okay? <laughs> um, but I do, that's incredible. Yes, and I use a CJC epimoralin. That's like um, a growth hormone serogog. We lose growth hormone as we age, so that's kind of like the fountain of youth. I take a mitochondrial peptide, MOTC, that's that true. increases your mitochondrial energy. Yeah. Um, oh, wait, do we have time? I take a sleep peptide. Oh, sleep so, peptide. Delta okay, sleep. okay, that, that, uh, let's touch All on that really right. quickly. We have one more minute. Wait, 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 wait. I want to ask you something okay. really quick first. Okay, okay, this uh, is, how we have to have you on next. How okay, dangerous okay. is uh, okay. HGH? Because that's one of the, like, oh, okay. uh, performance-enhancing drugs I see, like, on the news frequently. Like, a lot of the pro athletes are doing it. Is it healthy in small get, doses? So, i rather use a, a growth hormone serogog. That's going to increase your growth hormone at physiological levels. It makes your body produce its own growth hormone. Where growth hormone, HGH, 
it can downregulate your daddy's production of growth because it's hormone. interesting. Yeah, it can if you abuse it, if you kind of microdose it or, you know, do it on smaller levels. But I just don't want that risk because there is a risk with that if you do have a cancer cell, it could make the cancer cell grow. Wait, faster. so then what is the basically better option to take then? That CJC you're at the Okay, Maryland. wait, I'm going to write that down. Yeah. Well, she can text it to you. You have her number, Chet. Okay. From last year, you're on a group text. Okay, so last question. Mm -hmm. A cannabis question. Okay. If a man is doing too much cannabis, can it make them, uh, you know? Yeah, it can lower their sperm count and testosterone. Yeah. Okay. And what about for their brain cells? Like, could it give you dementia or Alzheimer's mm -hmm. if you're doing a daily thing of cannabis? I, I don't, I mean, I haven't done Okay, that can you do the research? Yes. And we'll talk about it next yeah. time. Yeah, well. Okay, so in closing, we, uh, uh, what is on your bucket list to help your patients? What's, what's the, what, what are th like the top so, things people need to do? Okay, like, yeah, I think number one, you need to improve your gut health. So BPC is amazing. Um, if there is any inflammation, like did you get a cold or you're not recovered from, like you keep getting sick, okay, there's some type of immune dysfunction we need we can address that it's super easy thymus and alpha peptide i absolutely love that you know even autism i'm seeing kids that they actually weren't even autistic they had a pandas type response where they were got some virus bacteria and they wow. had this inflammatory response where they present like they're autistic mm -hmm. but then you give them this peptide and they're like normal no way mm -hmm. so that's wow. incredible and then i love this other peptide called wow. cerebral and makes you super smart i take it all the time what, what, what's, it called? what's it called cerebral liacin i want to take that too uh, yeah it's that's what i was telling you i'm yeah. gonna take that one i'm gonna yeah, take that the one the fact you forgot the ipad and you need that one <laughs> <laughs> and richard is saying you already went back to get it and so I went you basically home to forgot it twice <laughs> jesus <laughs> christ <laughs> Like, that's when you went to get it. I, I was like, oh, it. my God, I need to give this girl some real life. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> well, hold on. Can stress cause, you know, like a brain yeah. fart like that? Hangovers, right. because, too. No, because no, I want to say, I want to tell everybody, I had a wasp outbreak in my house inside. Mm -hmm. and there was only a three. That's not an outbreak. A scorpion. And then, not as, that's not a swarm. And then my, my no, listen. Three and then, wasps My brand not new swarm. stucco job that was uber expensive. I'm not going to say, I'm, you know, right now, now mm -hmm. how much it was. And then the roofers came to do the roof, and then they smudged the um, tile, not the tile, the cement. All they touch their hands and everything, and really well, stuck up. You know, I think with the peptides, you're gonna it's gonna help your cortisol. You're not gonna be so stressed out when stuff like happens. Yes. Life what? happens, right? What? Yeah, it's, it's, nothing is it's gonna there a, happen. Yeah. There's, you're gonna get a ticket. But it's you're not gonna typical. Get... So it, like in two days, peptide, I had too much. Right? Everyone yeah. should be oh, stressed. Oh, it's just peptide, peptide right. especially you. So that way, when <laughs> stress and life happens, you'll be. No, fun. I'm usually very relaxed. That's not true. I don't like that Richard has said that. I'm usually relaxed and fun, and everywhere you go. He's talking the fact you've been stressed today. You're days. projecting that you've been <laughs> no, stressed a the lot. Last two days, you're just talking about today. Stressed, just so what days. is the stress peptide? Well, well, one that's going to help adrenal fatigue and oh, okay. cortisol yeah. function. So yeah, I would say course. like yeah. epitalin, yeah. thymus and beta, thymus and yeah, alpha. Cortisol, yeah. you know, we're a lot of... So everybody go to Stella Wellness. Stella... Um, Capri Wellness. Stella Capri Stella Wellness. Yeah. I'm in Old and Town. And Candice. Yeah. Where are you? In Old Town. It's a lovely office. And what's your phone number? By the way. Oh, for for nice. Stella? <laughs> phone number uh well everybody you can check it out uh listen to the show and right here. send number. it to your friends okay. tell the phone number real Here's quick the number is 480-687-4293 thank you saving the planet one show, show 